I want to know about who Tim was growing up. You know, I was like, I want to know who Tim was from like little baby Tim kind of coming up. Like, what was that like in uh in Los Angeles and Los Angeles, California? Oh yeah, so uh, I grew up in LA. Grew up in the jungles. Uh, <laughs> when I was about seven or eight, you no, know, my mom moved to San Bernardino, California. You no, know, we had a lot of domestic problems. Grew up mm -hmm. in a single family household, single mother, and uh, I'm the type of person to take you no. Know, you no know, different examples from everyone, and she, you know, I, I never really seen her working. We was always on welfare, Section Eight, whatever the case may be. And I, I, te I tend to be a person like I, I don't want to live like that. You no, know, everybody, everybody wants something better for themselves, right? And my goal was to, you know, give something back to my family, give something back to my kids whenever I pass away, because you can't take anything to the grave with you. Right. I mean, so as I grew up. You know, I started to see, you know, different things. You know, I see gangs over here. You know, I see people working over here. And a lot of my buddies were in gangs. You know, you had Rolling Sixties where I was at. You had another gang called Troops. A lot of my buddies were in it. And you, it's, as a young person, you know, you're easily influenced by those, by those gangs around you. And luckily, I was able to pick up a basketball and play basketball from the time I was like fourth or fifth grade all the way to my high school years. And that helped me stay away from the gangs and things like that. I mean, but... Even was that like the main thing that 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 actually happens? Like once I discovered basketball, that was more so of why I ended up not going this direction. Vice, what could have happened? Because I mean, as as we've seen, like we've all I've grown up around gangs. I know a lot of my friends uh, that grew up around like between gangs and just like being in like uh, grew up in poverty, and a lot of them actually fell victim to that. So like what? Besides basketball, like what was like the main thing that actually said, you know what? One, I don't want none of that. I, I don't want to do that. That's not me. And two, how did you like uh, get past like all the pressure of people trying to get you to uh, go toward that direction? Yeah, so uh, I actually got jumped in. The gang called troops associated with the Crips, and I was like, after like a week, you know, in the initiation process, whatever it is, I was like, yeah, I ain't getting paid for this. And if I get no money, <laughs> and, and that's how it was. I'm like, we are here doing, like we're not getting paid for nothing we're doing. So I'm like, hey, I'm gonna steer away from this. And luckily, my cousin played basketball as well, so we started playing ball. And I was like, hey, I'm gonna continue to play ball. And you know you always have, you know, NBA dreams, college dreams, whatever the case may be. So you put all your effort in that. But at the same time, I still had this part of me, you know, the entrepreneurship part where mm. I still wanted to make money. So I went out and bought a lot more. I started knocking on folks' doors, and I'm like, hey, can I move your line five, ten bucks? Because I wasn't getting no money for lunch. And, right. and being on that free lunch, man, you don't really want no free lunch because there, there's limited opportunities there. So if you have no five, ten bucks, you know, I get the pizza, the, the pizza bread with the Coke, and I can get you no know, better lunch. And more people talk to you, you got a little bit more money. And I have to buy my own school clothes as well. So I'm right. like, if I, if I go mow these few lines, I get 10, 15 bucks a week. And then uh, one of my buddies, uh, he felt subject to gang gang activity, but we used to sell cannon together. And uh, it's kind of weird thinking about it now because it probably violated a few child labor laws. But this white, <laughs> this, this white man. Hold up, you know uh, what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> this white man used to pick us up, right? And the guy would front us candy, you know, like a big box of candy. Oh, absolutely. And, yeah, and he would drop us off in front of uh, different stores in different cities. Like, hey, if you sell this box of candy, I keep 50% of your profit. So we out there hustling, right? Mm. Uh, I, I sell 50 bars of candy, $2 a pop. You no, know, I get $100. I get right. 50 bucks, whatever it is. At $50 as a, a ninth, 10th grader, you know, that's a good amount of money for you every weekend. I mean, so I always had this entrepreneurship spirit. You know, I always wanted to find different ways to make money. And that's really where it started. And to tell you the truth, I didn't even know, you know the Marine Corps got paid, you know, until uh, until I got my first you no know, paycheck stuff from Civil Marine Credit Union that boot camp. Right. So, Y'all paying me to do this to run around and you know jump on stuff, and I can do this for the rest of my life. Like, this ain't even that bad. Real quick before we get too far now, because hey, I see you excited. That's all I'm talking about. Hey, we need that excitement in the stream. But so what I was saying with the the, I know you said you had the you had the entrepreneur uh, uh, spirit. Uh, you started off with candy bars, but 
So, but what was like the defining point? Was it the, the, the gang part where you're like, I have to do something entrepreneur wise because I knew when I was uh, younger, I did the same type of thing, but that was, I asked around like, hey, how old do you have to be to work? You know, can I get a job here? Can I get a job there? And I kept getting told like, you know, there's, there's something called a, a job waiver or an age waiver for a job. And I used to go city to like go around the city on foot trying to find this damn waiver that never existed. So I was like, nah. So I started selling lollipops and I started, you know what I'm saying, figuring out different ways. Next thing you know, like I'm, I'm buying skateboards, I'm buying all type of, you know, things that I, I would have never thought of being able to do. Um, so what, was that kind of like what it was for you? Um, I know you said basketball kept away from gangs, but did the whole, when did the entrepreneur spirit actually come? Uh, well, it really came when my mom, you know, she lost her apartment, we got evicted. Mm. And we had to go to a shelter for about, you know, six to eight months. And I think at that moment, I was like, yeah, never again will, you know, I be broke. Never again uh, will I have to live this life. Never will my children have to experience this. I mean, because that's the last thing you want to go through. You know, that, that's one of those defining moments that's like, hey, from this point forward, you know, uh, I'm going to make a way for myself. You know, it's supposed to be America. You know, everyone else was that American dream, right? And you had to right. find your way for yourself. I think that was the moment. And that was right before I went to ninth grade. I was sitting in the, sitting in the Salvation Army. Uh, uh, I can't even remember what it's called. Uh, a homeless shelter. Mm. You know, you have to be up at 6 o'clock in the morning. They give you whatever cereal. And after that, you know, you, your parents are supposed to go out and find a job. You can't, you can't come back till 6 p.m. I mean, so we, we walked everywhere, never had a vehicle. Uh, never had really a place to stay. And so me having to live, you know, through that life, you know, help me proceed to where I am now. Right. So as, as far as trying to like paint a little bit more of a picture of like what it's like to be in the shelter and um, what was it like at school when people like maybe, did people find out that that's where you were at? Because uh, I, I know like the, the pressure, like Kids be on your neck when they find out that you, you can't afford the good shoes because that's how I was. And yeah. people like, what brand is that? Or like they find out like, hey, you know, who are you? You're homeless living in a shelter or something like that. I, I'm sure that type, type of pressure like actually played a part in your uh, experience in school. Yeah, so, I mean, so, so luckily it, was, it wasn't that long. Uh, I mean, I grew up wearing pro wings from uh, Payless. And we all know those, those shoes are terrible. Hell yeah! I mean, two yeah. weeks of playing ball on the blacktop, and this thing's already got holes in them. Right. I mean, so uh, I don't have to deal with it too much. Uh, I mean, it just hit me internally. Like, nah, I never want to have to experience this again. Never want my kids to have to experience this. I mean, so uh, I just, you know, stuck to that spirit, kept that work ethic, and you know, I was trying to try to you try to instill it in other folks, you know, the best you can. Right. So you, you said in ninth grade is when you moved to the, the shelter where you had to be up all early. So yeah. at what point did did it take you joining the military before you were able to uh, finally get, get back on your feet? Or was it uh, were you able to do that prior to? No, I did it prior to because once I was moving to the shelter, uh, my mom's friend, uh, which is my aunt, you know, I went to go stay with her, her, her okay. four sons. And so she was able to take me in. I stayed with her for the last four years of doing my high school years. And I know she took care of me. You know, they fed me, uh, clothed me, things like that. But like I said, I, I try to get back, try to stay on my own. You know, went to go try to find a job, still cut grass, still sow candy. You know, because last thing I want to do is be a burden on somebody else. Uh, right. Because you start being a burden on somebody else, they're more likely to kick you out because, you know, you're not really helping out the family. I mean, so during those four years, you know, I was fortunate enough for somebody to look out for me. And right. so my mom moved back to LA. I stayed in San Bernardino with my four cousins and their mom. And then I seen her work ethic because she was a high school dropout. Right. She owned her home, own in-home daycare that was run by the state. And mm -hmm. she was making over 100 grand a year. So I'm like, if, they, if this person, high school what? dropout, <laughs> making over 100 racks a year, uh, running an in-home daycare, ran through the state, she could do it, I can do it. I need all that. <laughs> And that's exactly what I thought about. I was like, yeah, if this person can do it, I can, I can definitely do it too. So she inspired me as well. Like I said, I try to take different, different pieces from different people. And whatever exam my mom set for me, I try to take that and my aunt as well. That's, that's huge. And 
sometimes, you know, when trying to understand empathy, like I try to explain to people is not everybody has that aunt, like for you in your case, not everybody has that person that's like, hey, you know, I could take you in, you know, to help out with some of the bills or to take a little bit of pressure off you because myself as well, I was fortunate enough to have my aunt. So we moved from Bermuda to California. And when I moved to California, uh, I believe my dad still stayed there, but I got moved over and my aunt lived in California. So I stayed with her for a couple of years until my dad was able to get his stuff situated to where, okay, we're going to put the family back together and, you know, and, and have our, our family all in one house. So, and, and not everybody's able to do that. So for you to be able to have, you know, your mom having her friend or, you know, your aunt, I, like, I'm, I'm extremely thankful for the fact that you had it. Cause I mean, you're sick, you're probably sitting here today cause you had somebody to actually uh, be able to help out in that situation. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I think about all the time, you know, every mother's day come around, I try to call both, you know, try to get back to both. And, you know, I mean, and that's the goal of all of this, you know, to try to be able to help your family out as much as possible. I mean, because there's no point of eating by yourself, really. Facts. You got you to bring your folks in, too, as well, as much as possible. So so is, speaking of that, and we're going to hit on that point a little bit later as well about bringing your people in. Uh, and I'm going to kind of tie that into, like, what the main part of what we were going over for today. But so now we have your early life, you know, going from Los Angeles, the gang culture, uh, moving up, you know, the – and I don't want this to seem like I'm just focusing on the negative part, right? But – I think it does help people because there's a lot of people that can relate to this. And if I, if, if you can, if people can relate to what you're trying to say, I think that's going to like kind of help people. Cause you know, when you hear about people tell their story, a lot of times they, you know, they talk about all the riches or how easy it is, or they see the after product. They don't really get to see the before product and how much you actually struggle before you're able to get to where you're at. <clears throat> so we'll come back to that part. But so now we have your early on life through high school, you stayed with your aunt for a while and then, what what was the decision to where you're like you know what maybe i should join the military and and when you came to that was it just the marine corps or were you like i don't mind trying other branches and how did that work out i had an older cousin she was a marine so she did four years okay and, uh i don't really know too much about the military growing up you know we didn't have rotc junior rotc at my high school now i was more focused on basketball and you know, trying to make a little bit of money on the side right but, Armor recruiter came to my one of my senior class, my economics class, my senior year. And he was like, "Yeah, you should come join the army. They're giving out fifteen thousand dollar bonuses." I was like, "Yeah, I'm not gonna join the army. I got, I don't, nobody got time for that. <laughs> I'm, about, I'm about to try to get this school scholarship to play some ball." Right. He was like, "Okay, whatever. You know, come in the basketball season. There ain't no scholarship. You no, know, anything's that because you I mean as we all know, you gotta play AAU, you get a little more exposure." Right. I mean, but. Then the Marine Corps came, the Marine Corps Marine uh, recruiter came to the class. He was like, hey, you want to come down and join the Marines? And I was like, well, the Army, you're giving $15,000 bonuses. Y'all not giving that? He's like, nope, you can do pull-ups and you go to boot camp. I was like, <laughs> oh, well, let me see a commercial. I already knew my cousin was, she was a Marine. <laughs> I was like, hey, it sounds like a plan. Hey, let's go down to the recruiting station. Went down there to get an interview. I was already 18 at the time. I was right. like, oh, I don't want to go to college now because I really don't like school. I mean, I like playing basketball. I don't like school, really. Right. I, hey, I hear you on that. Yeah, I'm sitting there in school. I'm not getting paid to, for six, eight hours of work. Like, I could be doing something else in my life right now. Right. Uh, so, thought about joining the military. Went in the Marine Corps August 8th, 2004. And I was like, yep. After the first, like, week, I was like, I could probably stay here until they kicked me out. Like, all oh, I do wait, after the first week of boot camp? Yeah, I, I can stay. Oh, yeah, well, no, I, mean, I you know you wasn't thinking that. Yeah, I was thinking that. I was like, hey, I, I can do this, and I want to be a drill instructor. You no, know, I was in Alpha Company, and them guys are hard, you know, running around screaming. I was like, I can do that. And that's exactly okay. what I was thinking. I had, to, I had a mentality right out of the boot camp. I was like, yep, I'm going to do that, and I'm staying until they kick me out. So, I, I like, the fact that you had that mentality in the first week, because I'm going to tell you right now, in there's probably a lot of tough guys that will probably be like, oh, yeah, boot camp was easy. You know, I just kind of cruised, did whatever I want. Stop it. Stop it. And I was not thinking that the first week. I promise you, I was thinking, man, what the hell did I get myself into, man? What, what is this place? What do you mean I can't sleep when I want to sleep? So the fact that you had that mindset, I think that kind of ties in also to where you're talking about the whole entrepreneurial spirit. And sometimes when you're young and you have to, you know, make 
uh, a path like a grown up does at a young age, you know, sometimes you have that like more advanced uh, mindset. And I think I feel like that's what it was for you. Uh, Cause I know a lot of people that wouldn't actually have that. So, you, you know, you went through recruit training, um, you know, obviously you, you did your basic training. I'm going to harp too much on that. And so your MOS is tanks, right? Yeah, I mean, it was tanks. My lab moved out of it, but I, I kind of had a weird, you know, uh, career. Right. Uh, I was a reservist first. Right. Uh, I, I signed a, rever- a reserve contract, you know, try to stay with the girl at a time. But uh, you, you know how that goes. <laughs> oh, works. <laughs> yeah. So I signed a reserve contract. And I was a reservist for two years. And then uh, during that reserve time, I was like, yeah, I need to go active duty. Because, right. Um, the, the, those checks, you know, they started dwelling down a little bit. And I was back working at a factory, you know, back in that limbo area. So mm-hmm. I went to talk to the recruiter, and they put me on the rec aid program where you had to just wait for boat space to go back to the fleet. So right. I had the rec aid program for like a year. And that, it was like a reserve active duty uh, uh, scenario. And just waiting on both space. Then after I get done with the reserves, you no, know, I went to first tanks like 2006 or seven, and uh, active duty from there. Nice, nice. So I, I can definitely see that because I had a lot of uh, reservists that I spoke to that you know try to go, uh, try to go active duty. And a lot of like when I was in actual recruit training, there was a lot of reservists who were like, man, I just wish I can go active duty. Right? Everybody says they want to go active duty, so it's time to go active duty. But um, all right, so you you go active duty. And from like your early on experience while you're in uh, in the Marine Corps to prior to going to the drill field uh, as a sergeant, like what what was that like? Oh, uh, well, I would say that's probably the best time I've been in the Marine Corps. Uh, I did two two deployments, one Iraq, one Afghanistan. Mm. I mean, but just the people you meet as a young uh, young troop, you know, corporal and below. You know, I, I still got some best friends to this day, you know, that I deployed with. And the thing about it, you know, that that first, you know, two, three years before I went to the depot, you no, know, I think that was setting me up for it, for what it is now because we were constantly spending money. Uh, after every deployment, you know, you come out with a good sum of money and I spent it on frivolous stuff, you know. I think I bought some a Fizu jeans, I bought some Jordans, and I was like always living paycheck to paycheck and I didn't know why. And no one really, you know, showed me the way. Hey, you should be putting your money here. You should be putting your money here. Rather, you know, me and my little, my, my little group would get together. Hey, let's go to L.A. for the weekend because we're in 29 Palms. Hey, let's go to San Diego for the weekend. Or, hey, let's go to uh, Vegas for the weekend, all of which are three hours away. And you know, that's like $500 a pop, you know, every that's weekend. Cool. Yeah. So if we would take a car down there, uh, get a hotel room, you no know, stay the weekend, you know, you're spending five, 600 bucks. Come back, you no know, paycheck to paycheck again. No waiting for that 15 check, waiting for that first check. And that, after they left, I started really thinking about money a little bit different. Yeah. You no, know, it's just that. I mean, that was a great time. You, know, you, you want to live your life, but I wish right. somebody told me, "Hey, put your money here, put your money here, and you know, save a little bit, you know, do certain things with TSP account, so that way uh, you could be better off in the future." Oh, absolutely. And and once again, to kind of go to that whole mindset about what we spoke about earlier, uh, how I was saying that you had that advanced mindset, as you've seen in the military, I mean, not to like throw anybody under the under the bus, but like I know people that have been in, they're about to retire after 30 years and they haven't saved money, you know? So I don't think any one pay grade is, uh, you know, any less susceptible to blowing money and not utilizing all their opportunity that they have, or even going out to seek what other opportunities they do have and options they have of how they can maximize their money. Cause I think I've seen it happen from private all the way up to master gunner sign, you know? Uh, and the fact that you were able to, you know, come to the realization and be conscious of that, be like, Hey, this ain't it. You know what I'm saying? I, I need to do something better. This cause I'm tired of having this naked bank account. Yeah. And uh, I had a buddy that I went to tank school with. Uh, he's out now, Corporal Harcum. And this guy said, Four years, you say forty thousand dollars. Now I'm not saying be a penny pincher as a young troop, you know, from from E1 to E5. I mean, you you want to be counting your pennies. I mean, but there still should be balance. You know, right. You, you still should be able to allocate your money different ways. You know, still have a good time. You know, still live your life. I mean, but it's, it it should be with all in reason. And you 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 should be able to save half of that forty thousand dollars really, 
especially if you're a single troop. Mm-hmm. And if you're dual income, no, even more. Uh, if you have a spouse, hey, make a budget. You know, if you spouse kids, I've been married for what, 15, 16 years. I got a 13 and 12 year old. And I, I know I've been able to do it. So I know it can be done. 15 years? Man, where were you at? I should have been asking you what the secret was going to marriage. Hold on. We can make a whole other segment to this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. No, that, that's awesome. And like, you know, I, I've, but see, the thing is, I've seen people that were married, and I've also seen people that were single, both have money problems and both have financial, like, superiority over a lot of other people. So, obviously, when you're you're married, and especially if you're getting, like, uh, you know, you got um, dual service, BAH, and all, or, and, you know, paychecks in general, you're probably a little bit more better off than someone that's single, but, you know, obviously, you're not bills, but... Um, uh, yeah, like I said, I, I've seen people on both sides of the spectrum save and blow money. So, uh, you know, but to hear you talk about being married for 15 years and doing it, once again, that's just something else that kind of ties on to your, like, your consistency and uh, you noticing and seeing, like, hey, this is the path to where I can get to where I want to be. So that's actually, that's pretty awesome, man. But um, all right. So uh, now we're, we're to the realization that we're like, okay, money needs to be saved. You know, this whole, you know, negative bank account, this ain't it. So specifically about the the TSP, like when did you come to a realization that your TSP can be quote unquote manipulated or adjust funds adjusted in order to, uh, to fully uh, get the benefit out. So before you answer though, all right, everybody here. So we got, um, Oh, what's going on? Uh, Leroy, appreciate you. This is the period where we're going to uh, hit specifically on finances. So make sure you guys listen up. He, um, Tim Jackson has a lot of information about this. And I know there's a lot of troops and a lot of Marines that have been dying to get information about the TSP and other, um, and other uh, financial gains as well. So here we go. All right. So, I mean, it first started when I was on a depot. I think I was a chief, talked to my serious commander. He was a finance major. And uh, we started talking about something about, I think, Tesla or Amazon. He was like, well, how's your TSP doing? And I was like, what do you mean, sir? I mean, I have all my money in a G fund. He's like, G fund? Uh, you need to look at that. And I was like, well, how do you do that? I mean, because a- as a recruit, you go through the TSP class, right? And you're not really paying attention. I mean, so nice. you should be able to access your account, and then you can adjust your funds where need be. Because if your money's sitting in the G fund, if you've looked at your TSP count, the G fund only gains what two to two point five percent per year. Right. Whereas we have these other funds, you no know, CSI life cycles, you know, they're gaining twenty percent, thirty percent. I think the C funds up thirty five percent this year. I mean, mm. I know we had a dip in the market. I mean, but it, it, it's recovered since then. And over the past ten years, I mean, I'll show everybody the data that's on there that you can put your money in these allocated funds. So that way, you know, your money grows, right? And you want to make sure you're using that Roth IRA. I may be jumping ahead a little bit, but you want to make sure you're using the Roth IRA right now because the, the theory is taxes are lower. Taxes are lower right now. Ten years from now, taxes may not be the same. So if your money's going in right now to Roth IRA, they're getting pre-taxed. So once they're in that account, they can't get taxed again. But mm-hmm. if you do traditional, they're going to get taxed on the back end. And when you pull your money out, now you're getting taxed at maybe a higher rate. Because we all know the direction, know the depth of the government, the direction we're going in. And last thing you want to do is have higher taxes. So get your money taxed now, right now when you're younger, and you really don't need it. I mean, but I'll show the funds right here. I'll put them up on my screen. Uh, just give me like a couple seconds. Right. But the first thing you need to do is make sure you know, you know how to access your account. Because there's plenty of Marines out there that don't know how to access their account. Uh, you need to make sure you send a email, or call TSP, they snail mail you the letter, your access, your account number, right? You get your account number, you make your PIN and password, and then uh, save it in a password manager in your computer. Use Google, use your Google Drive and save your PIN, PIN number and password, or memorize it like I do. And now you can go into the funds in there and you can do an intra fund transfer. Mm. And that, that, that's how you manipulate your, uh, manipulate your TSP account. And I'm gonna pull up my screen right now See if I can share a screen. Yeah, I was like going on there earlier today too. I was like, why isn't this thing working? <laughs> I'm 
Uh, Shane Square, uh, share. There we go. Yeah, we go to investment funds, right? And you can look at the returns over the past year. Let me see if I get a summary. Yep. So, so these are returns, like I was talking about. So you got you got G fund right here. I mean, last twelve months, G fund one point six seven percent. So if your money is sitting in a G fund, it's not really collecting anything. I mean, it's more than your savings account with your regular bank, maybe Navy Fed. I mean, but one point six seven. I mean, that's a little bit of nothing. And when you go over to the C fund, it's 12%. So every thousand dollars, what, 12% of a thousand dollars, what is that, like 120 bucks? You're making a lot more than this 1.67. And if you, you look at 2019 C fund, 31%, no S fund, 27%, I fund, 22%, G fund, 2.24%, which at a boot camp, that's what your money is in, the G fund. I right. mean, so the easiest way to do it, you need to change it. Right, go to your account, my account right here, and you do an intra fund transfer. Click on that button, bam. Oh, I don't want to cover my money up. <laughs> bam, logging out. Or anybody taking my stuff? But you do an intra fund transfer, look up those account numbers, right? And that's how you get back to it. So, real quick, so obviously, there's, there's a reason why the G fund is, is less percentage than like the S or the I fund, right? Can you kind of explain to the viewers um, why that is and um, you know what the risks and the, the benefits are? And, and before you do do that, please everybody that's in the chat, share this feed out, share this live feed out to anyone you think can benefit from this because we want to make sure that this information gets out because for those of you that have been in for a while, you know we do not get TSP class all the time. And uh, you know, Tim has taken his time out of his day to give us all the knowledge that he knows about how uh, we can better to maximize our TSP. So please share out the stream. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so the G fund is government securities, right? It's gonna be consistent, you no. Know, it's gonna be low risk, minimal to no risk, really. So when it, when we just took a hit, but like, three months ago, uh, with the quasi recession, uh, it, it stayed consistent, 2%. But the issue is, I mean, the recession is what, every 10, 11 years? Right. I mean, so during that time, my count went down. It went down 30%, but it's recovered since then. So if you are stuck in a G fund, you're still sitting at 2% per year. You're putting in your money, putting in your money, but you're only getting 2% return. Whereas somebody in a C fund, you know, they're getting consistent 20%, 15 to 20% per year. And we should be able to max that out because you talk about any other 401ks, Roth IRAs, like the max is like, 7,000 per year, 7,500. TSP, you could put 20, $22,000 in your TSP account per year. So you, you should try to max that out per year, per year, setting yourself up for the future. And the, the, the good thing about it is the more money you put in it, now you can loan yourself the money, right? Because they have two loan options on there. You can take a personal loan out with a very low interest rate, and you can take a, a commercial building loan out with a very low interest rate. Two loans at the same time that you pay back through your your my pay. So, so real quick before we get before we get that far so <clears throat> to kind of like help uh to kind of bring it down to from the lowest level to the highest level like what would you tell like the the pfc or the new marine that's coming in or even like an nco or someone that's been in for like a little while how would you explain to them how that they can max it out because when you tell someone hey yeah just put seventy five hundred dollars in your account a month or a year they're like or 22,000 a year, they're like, well, yeah. look at their bills. So like, how would you how would you tell them to start off? And then as they're moving up in the ranks, like how would you, uh, what would you tell them? What kind of advice would you give them to how they can maintain that? Oh, so, so just one of the things I've done is the first thing you need to make a budget, right? You need to make, a, make a, a solid budget that makes sure you're truthful with yourself. Look at your bank statement over the last three, four months. See what you spend your money on. See what bills are coming out. See what subscriptions you have. A lot of folks have subscriptions that come out they don't know about. Uh, right. Make sure you cancel all that and make sure you can allocate the money to your TSP. Uh, with that being said, a lot of folks only have 1% to 2% coming out of their check. And you, you may need you know, liquidity in your account, may need the money in your checking and savings account you know, to spend it or whatever. I mean, but as a new PFC, Lance Corporal, I mean, what bills do you have? Uh, cell phone. You're probably sharing internet 
in the barracks. Oh, a new Mustang. Uh, Come on, you know how that goes. <laughs> he's he eating at the gut truck all the time, the food truck, when you should be eating, <laughs> well, when you should be eating at the chow hall. I mean, right. but the first thing, as soon as you get your PFC last corporal, you know, sit them down, have them do a budget, see where their money's going. You know, once they have that budget, hey, then recommend, hey, I think you should probably be putting 8 to 10%, you know, Roth, Roth IRA in your TSP. Get the Roth option, 8 to 10%. And then as you get promoted, you know, from PFC to Lance Corp, we'll put, go up another percent. Uh, we get that yearly pay raise, 2.5% per year from the government. That, that hasn't stopped over the last 20 years. That's another percent you go up. So you should at least be going up, you know, at least 1% per year, try to get it to 15 or fifteen or higher. You know, the higher the percentage, the better. Then they're taking that money out of account. So once you reach, you know, a, a, a certain level you want to reach at, now you can take that money out for loans, take that money out for di different opportunities for yourself on the back end. I mean, but that budget is important. Yeah, that's and that's what I try to explain to people too, is like, you know, people, you know, you go from Lance Cobra, you, you're, you're living on Lance Cobra pay and you know, you're, you're, you're struggling, but yet you move up to Cobra and now you just think you have so much more money. And it's like, I, I think that's, if I can go back in time, I think that was one of my downfalls is I always thought, okay, well, when I pick up this rank, I'm going to have this much more so I can start accrue another bill or get another yeah. new car or something like that. And it's like, no, that's not it. Because I remember in 2017, I paid off my truck when I was at a training at OTS. And it, that was like five, 500 or something like that. And after I uh, uh, refinanced, it went down to like 300 or something. But that was a big load off. I'm like, man, I'm not $600. Like, oh yeah, I'm not doing this again. End up buying a Civic because it saved me a whole lot of gas. And I just paid that off today. So now it's like, that's two payments I no longer have. And then you'll be surprised that like, you start looking like, wow, I have a lot more money each month. Yeah. And when you slowly start chopping away some of these things and, and you, you know, you do allotments, you know, for your investments, like you don't even, you don't even notice it. Yeah, and that's big. I mean, that car payment is probably one of the biggest burdens I had as well. And as soon as I got rid of it, I was like, oh, I got extra 600 bucks. And most people, you know, they'll go out and buy a new car. Because the, the average American buys a new car, what, every five years? Right. And, I mean, a car is to get from point A to point B. You know, once, once, you know, you get out of that mindset where I'm going to go spend my paycheck, my new paycheck on a car, because Marines go all the time, they get promoted, go buy a new car. Right, because we want to spend the money before we get it. So I get my paycheck this week. I'm gonna go buy this. Where you should be paying yourself first, second, maybe even third. You know, allocating your money, and then worrying about your liabilities. Because your assets, uh, whatever properties you have, the money you're earning, or whatever that be stocks or TSP, those assets should be paying for your liabilities. Like your earned income from your your first job, your Marine Corps paycheck, your service paycheck. I mean, yeah, you need you need a car. I mean, but that should be for you no know, your invest your investments right there. You know, right. Pay yourself first, second, and third, and then let your assets pay for your liabilities. Vice, your liabilities paying for your liabilities. Right. No, that and that makes complete sense because I don't think I've ever. Let me think. I don't think I've ever bought a brand new car. So the last vehicle that I that I bought was a 2008 Chevy Avalanche that I bought in 2011. So I mean, it, it was relatively new. I think I had like 20 something thousand miles on it or something like that. Um, but now that I paid off, it's like, well, granted, it helped that I was on the drill field. And we all know we got the drill field. you don't put that many miles on your damn car. Yeah. And, and then being in Japan, you know, my, my truck was in storage. So that's another three years that I saved of putting miles on my vehicle. Uh, so I was definitely lucky in that case, but I don't see a need to just go out and buy another vehicle just because I have two vehicles that are paid off because I mean, they're, they're perfectly fine. There's, there's no point. And not only that, but like you said, like I've learned the difference between asset and liability. And for those people that have looked into it, like a vehicle is literally a liability. Yeah. Like so as soon as you drive that thing off the lot, you know, the, the price goes down. And no matter if you take care of it or not, uh, really no matter what the vehicle is, the price is going to go down. I mean, you could buy, buy a vehicle Monday, take it back next Monday. They're like, oh, well, it went down $2,000. Yeah. 
because they're on the business of making money. And right. so, I mean, these vehicles are flowing every year. They always come out new vehicles every year. I mean, so once you got a vehicle, a reliable vehicle, pay it off. Or if you got your, your, a hand-me-down vehicle, drive it to the wheels fall off, you know, stack your money up, you know, uh, invest in yourself, you know, reallocate your funds. And then once you then pay it off in cash, if you want to buy a vehicle, you no, know, then reward yourself. Instead of looking at a vehicle as, oh, I need this new vehicle, or I need this, I need this. Whereas a lot, a lot of times, those things are just wants, you know. And that, that's one of the biggest things you know, I've seen people run into. Right. So one thing that you said that was like reallocate your funds. So I, I know you you brought the screen. And first of all, I like to say, like I said, thank you very much for doing that and actually sharing your screen. Uh, maybe a little bit too much information, but you know, <laughs> thank you for sharing your screen because that allows the users to actually be a little bit more personable with what we're actually talking about. But so two questions for you is how often should you reallocate and like re like uh, evaluate and reallocate your funds? And then also how much do you think a month like should be like kind of like your, your, your guideline for what, how much you should be putting into your funds? And is it 50-50 into this fund, some into this fund, or is it just put a little bit in each one? So uh, first thing you need to do is, you know, talk to like-minded people. You know, right. I always bounce my ideas off one of my buddies. You know, he's a, a little more savvy than I am uh, when it comes to, you know, TSP. Yeah, he has a little more, uh, uh, you, know, you know what I mean. I right. mean, but uh, bounce your idea off somebody, Look at you no know, that sheet that I show that shows the percentages, and you no know, then you can just pick. You no, know, I think I have sixty percent in the C fund. I think I have another fifteen percent in the I fund. Uh, another ten percent life cycle twenty fifty, and then maybe another ten percent. I don't know if that runs to a hundred percent or not. I mean, but another ten percent in the in the G fund. I mean, but my main main source is a C fund because that was the highest percentage. And just like I talked about, you no, know, your your goal is to make as much money in your TSP as you can now, because uh, I've seen people say, if you, you, you just allocate what 8% in a TSP in a G fund, you'll be a millionaire by the time you retire. Well, you, you're not going to be a millionaire off in the 2% interest. You, know, you, <laughs> yeah. you need to be able to reallocate your funds and make that money work for you. And just like I talked about, make that budget first. Then once you click Roth IRA and you see your money, then you go in there, do intra fund transfer, or you just go with the ones that already have for you, like the life cycle 2050, you know, they allocate the funds for you, life cycle 2040 allocates the funds for you. I mean, but if you want to do it yourself, you're saving up yourself, then you can do all the extra fund transfer yourself and make it, you know, then it's a little more personable. Right. So the, the life cycle, is that like a, is that an app or just the life cycle? So the life cycle 2050 is on the TSP page. Let's see if I still have pulled up. Yeah. Yeah, it's on the TSP account after you access your account, and then you go to that same uh, uh, place that investment funds, and you could click on on intra fund transfer. You click on life cycle 24 or life cycle 2050, and they allocate the funds for you and give you a nice breakdown of where your funds will go and what they should be uh, by the time you retire. So does and now I know you said that you can just do it on your own, but like so, I mean, is there a benefit? I mean, obviously there's a benefit of of doing it that way. But does it get like relatively close to where you think that it should be? Uh, I mean, you, you can see the difference. You know, I had a buddy I was in the same, we came around the same time, both 2004. Uh, he's currently at TBS. And okay. all his money was in the G fund, right? And I was like, hey, dog, how much percentage gain have you had over this past year? 2.5%. Whereas me and my other buddy that reallocated our funds, we we're at 17, 18%. <clears throat> That's a lot more money than two percent, right? I mean, that's seven. That's what. It's almost four thousand. Yeah, that's like three, three extra four thousand dollars that we have for the future, or we can do whatever we want with. And so, mm. C fund, life cycle twenty forty, I fund, S fund. Uh, I think those are your biggest funds. Uh, if you want to be, you know, a little less risk, I mean, you can you can look at the percentages that are on there, but uh, you just follow that fund performance and look at the percentage that are on there. So, you know, you, you speak about risk. So is the risk losing money or just not gaining as much as you normally would? Like, is there a point where you're going to lose money by putting it into those risky funds? So you, I, I always say you never lose money unless you sell. 
Right. That's just one of those stock things I picked up. Right. I mean, but at the beginning of the year, like I said, we're in a quasi recession. You know, the Dow dropped down to 19K and your seed fund is going to ride with the Dow and S&P 500. So I lost 30% of my account. I looked, I was like, man, I lost a bunch of money. But three months later, it's recovered. You know, the Dow's at 27K now. It's at 26.9 now. I mean, but my, my, my account has recovered since then. Right. So you don't lose anything unless you start manipulating. It's like if I, if I would have moved my money to the G fund during the recession, I would have probably lost that money, right? Because then I would have sold. Right. So I kept in there and I trust what's going on because the Dow and SP 500, they've been riding high over the last 30 years. Mm. That's when you have to trust your economy, trust what's going on, you know, just trust the process. And then, you know, trust the TSP account because that's pretty much one of those accounts that's foundational for every service member. Like, they're not going to let that thing crash. You know, they're trying to take oh. care of us as service members, make sure everyone's set up when they retire. So throw your money in there. And then once you, you know, do your 20, 30 years, whatever, uh, once you turn 50 or you feel comfortable with your money, then throw it to the G fund and now you're protected. Right. right. The goal right now when you're younger is to make as much money as possible. So that way, you know, you can protect your money later. Oh, that. And I hope you guys all hear that because I'm going to tell you right now, like working at a university and getting to see like the, the whole officer pipeline, um, you know, my, my captain, uh, he actually speaks a lot about like finances to the, you know, the newly, excuse me, the newly um, commissioned officers and gives them a, a lot of what their options are when it comes to TSP. And obviously they got to go over like the blended retirement uh, funds as well. And it, it's definitely, it's, it's definitely good to know that there's, there's people that are actually like starting people off at like a young age or like a young time of you coming into the service and then allowing your money to be accruing. Cause I'm going to be honest, like, I didn't know much about the TSP when I was in recruit training. And this isn't an excuse that I'm trying to make, but when I was in recruit training, I barely even remember that class. I remember just like, yeah, get it if you want. Cool. If it's not, that, that's it. That's all like, we were kind of taught. And it's like, when I was a drone instructor, like I made sure I harped on it so much because I know that I was losing out and I, and I heard all my peers talking about the TSP and it's like, I know I had to look into it. And I told all my recruits like, Hey, get that TSP, you know, make sure you guys are like how you're saying it, make your money work for you. So you're not in a position. Like I know a lot of senior Marines that didn't start their TSPs and they're about to retire, yep. you know? And I guarantee if they could go back and do it again, that they would, they would start their TSP and they would, they would reach out to people just like how we're talking about right now and figure out how they can manipulate their funds to where they can maximize their money. Yeah. Yeah. That's the ultimate goal. And then when I talked about loans earlier. Now, instead of you going to a bank, right, or going to a different institution, you can take a loan from yourself. Right. And, and now you're paying yourself and using your money to, for different opportunities. Like they have a loan uh, option on there for a personal loan. I think the interest rate is like 2.5%. And then they have another loan on there for like a commercial property, now, which is pretty big. Just now you can go out and start a business for yourself. Right. And, I thought that was amazing. Like you, you can, and that's like three percent. And like institutions rarely give out you no know, commercial property loans. Rarely give out business loans unless you have some kind of schooling or you have some type of experience. And right there, you're, you're paying yourself. Now you have capital. You don't have to worry about anything else. You you don't have to worry about crowdfunding. You don't have to worry about you know talking to your friends, parents. You know trying to do a joint venture. You know you can do everything by yourself because you already have the capital. Or you can take that money and that, loan yourself the money. And go buy a property, buy investment property, or go mm -hmm. in, like, you know, buy some condos. Now, now, now you're, you're building your asset column instead of building your liability column with buying cars and you no know, frivolous things and not being frugal. You no, know, because that's the, that's the angle. Have that capital to, to accrue some assets, whether that be stocks, mutual funds, or you no know, properties. And that TSP could be your foundation if you, you know, uh, accrue the money right, allocate the funds right. Now you're getting an interest and using that, that 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 money that's working for you. Now it's purchasing for your lot for your assets. Mm. I love it. I love it. So who we got? We got Leroy said I got half going to the C, half to the S. Uh, my boy, uh, Second Lieutenant Sandoval, he just recently commissioned as well. Let's get it. Um, Malik again. 
I wish I would have heard it before. And we're going to get to that in a second, Malik, because I got something to kind of go along with that. Uh, Dustin Nelson, Lieutenant Jackson, speak the truth. <laughs> Facts. Facts. Hey, um, so this is about our time when we start wrapping up, but I got a few more things I want to uh, kind of go over with you. First of all, I just want to salute to everybody in the chat that has supported. Thank you so much. And we're going to continue to make this platform, uh, you know, grow. And if you know someone or you want it to be uh, a guest on the uh, on my podcast, email me at veteraninfluencers at gmail.com. Uh, let me know approximately like, when, like what topics, what you would want to go over like what you kind of specialize in, something that could benefit the veteran influencers community, what like, and around about time that you might want to do it, like July, August, so on and so forth. Um, and, and something I want, to, I want to leave you guys with before we go over how they can find you is, if you were talking to Private Jackson right now, what would you want to tell him? Oh, Private Jackson right now? Hey, put some money to the side, invest in Amazon, invest in Tesla, uh, 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 open up an individual brokerage account. You know, I mean, there's always that woulda, shoulda, coulda. Uh, that's one of the reasons I started, you know, a stock trading group to keep people abreast of what's going on in the market, uh, keep people privy to that information. I mean, because there's always new companies out there. There's always opportunities. Yes. You know, with the advancement of the internet, you know, we got we, these little things right here. Do the same thing as laptops. A lot of people on the phone playing games on TikTok. Hey, yeah, I man, that's all good and well and fine. <laughs> I mean, I, I have no problem with you on TikTok. You no know, Insta face, Instagram. Hey, do your thing. I mean, but you should you should know you know what what companies are out there that are you know about to get hot or that maybe look to the future because there's always the next Amazon, always the next Tesla. If I was talking to Private Jackson, hey, put some money to the side. You may want to need it for the future. Hey. Stop, stop spending money on Jordans all the time that you're never going to wear because you're always in uniform. I mean, right. so just, just small things like that. You know, hey, save your money here. You don't need to do. You don't need to go on that venture. Just stay your money. Stay in the barracks. Go play basketball over the weekend and save your money. So. Love it. Love it. So um, let's go over. You know, we spoke about your. Well, me and you privately spoke about the group that you actually run for investment. So if you can kind of let them know, like a quick little part about that. Uh, and maybe how that they can get involved with something like that. Uh, also, if you can let them know your social media as well, and I'll put it in the description of the video once the video uh, comes out. Uh, but if you can let them know where to find you, if obviously if you want them to find, I don't know if you want everybody on your personal accounts or if you have a business account or, or whatever, and then let them know also um, about your what you do, how you run your, your stock group. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so I currently run a stock group that's tailored to uh, service members. I think we have maybe about 50 members. And uh, it specifically covers, you no know, penny stocks. I mean, it's a little more high risk in that game, you know, people that are playing with their money, you know, just trying to get different opportunities. I mean, but I sound alerts so of what stocks are hot, what stocks should be hot for the day, uh, what stocks could gain, you no know, 20% in a day, sometimes 100%, sometimes 1,000% in a day. And, uh, you know, that's one group I run. I run a civilian group, which we just started, called Penny Stock Savages. It's so mm -hmm. ran through Slack and it's tailored more towards the civilian side. And I know that's still up and coming, but that's geared towards a uh, subscription service where you know guys get the alerts and then they pay the group you no know, ten dollars a month, pay the admins ten dollars a month. But the service members ones, that, that one's free. You know, I don't think service members should have to pay for information. Uh, I'm here for them. You no, know, I'm trying to help them out as much as possible, whatever information I have or whatever education they need. You know, they, we go on, they go on a WhatsApp group. And uh, if anyone wants to be a part of it, uh, you just send me your uh, download WhatsApp, and then you send me your phone number. I put you in the group, and then you're part of the group, pretty much. And like I said, that's tailored towards service members. Okay. And if you can let them know where to reach you, because when the video comes out, I'm gonna put you know your information. Like I'm gonna let them know, hey, WhatsApp. Make sure you go to that. Let them know what your WhatsApp is. I'm not really too familiar with WhatsApp. I don't know if it's like a you have a screen name or if you have to type in your phone number specifically. But uh, I'll put all that information in the description as well. But um, where can they actually uh, reach you in order to to gain that information from? Yeah, for uh, the Facebook, I'm pretty sure my screen name is Tim Tim Sammy Jack. Uh, I think that's what it is. Yeah, Tim yeah. Sammy Jack. Yeah, this is me right here. Can y'all see that? Everybody see that? <laughs> see that? 
Oh, yeah, yeah, Sam, Sam and Jack, and my Instagram is uh. It's pretty ridiculous, by the way. I try to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I don't know if you can see that. Right there, freezer. Right there. There we go. Ti dot mothi sixty five thirteen. Yeah, man. The WhatsApp group is pretty simple. Uh, it's just a message that comes to your phone. Uh, kind of like a text message, but everybody in the group can post. And then anybody that sees anything that may be, you know, something of opportunity, you know, I analyze it and get back to them immediately. I'm on there probably probably 24-7. Well, not when I'm asleep. I mean, but while I'm awake, you know, I'm on there sending out messages and alerts, you know, and just keep people privy to what's going on in the market. So that way, you know, they can make money, money on the side. And really the ultimate goal is to use that as a second career. I mean, because there's a lot of money to be made day trading, and then subscription service must be my third source of income, which I'm working on now. So, mm. you know, ultimate goal, you know, gotta have multiple streams of income so that way, you know, your retirement money is just retirement money. Go live life and give to your kids or whatever. And you never have to worry or stress about money because you got it. Yeah. Well, hey, um, every like I said, everybody in the chat, thank you guys so much. When the video comes out, which will be a few days. Well, I'll put little segments out, but if you guys can go ahead and hit that thumbs up, please on the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and make sure you follow my veteran underscore influencers Instagram page. Cause that's where I'm going to be posting these little snippets. I'll put a few of them on my YouTube channel here as well, but any type of news with our next guests or uh, future lives or anything will all be through my veteran influencers Instagram page. So please share that information out. This platform is going to be huge. I know it. I have so many people. Uh, Tim has given us so much information. I'm going to be chopping all these type of uh, this video up and putting all type of different snippets out for you guys. And I just want to say I am so thankful that you took the time out of your day to uh, come on here and to give this information because I've had so many people message me, hey, can you get somebody to talk about finances and to talk about TSP specifically? And you, and you nailed it, you know what I'm saying? Right. So uh, thank you so much, sir. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, it, it means the world to me. And I know these guys all got something out of it, so. Hey, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Absolutely, absolutely. I'll definitely, I'll, I'll hit you up after this, sir. Okay. All right, appreciate it.